Hey guys, Patrick Ward here with OptimumSportsPerformance.com and sitting next to me is my friend and great strength coach Carson Boddicker of BoddickerPerformance.com. Carson, how's it going? Great, thank you. Excellent. Well today we're going to talk about some assessment for breathing. So in my first article, I talked a little bit about uh, breathing and some of the negative things that can go, that can happen in your body uh, when proper breathing patterns aren't observed. So today I'm going to show you guys a few assessment techniques that you can take back uh, when you're looking at your personal training clients or if you're a clinician uh, in physical therapy or chiropractic, doctor, massage therapist, whatever. Um, you can take these techniques, kind of observe the way your clients breathe and make some mental notes and then go back and look at that first article and see if uh, any of the potential negative things are actually going on with that person, especially as it applies to the way that they move. So the first assessment we're going to do with Carson seated here, he's just going to look straight ahead, normal posture and just be as relaxed as possible. He's going to place one hand on his chest, one hand on his stomach. Obviously I wouldn't tell the client that you're watching their breathing patterns because you don't want them to change anything. Um, so you want this to be as pure as possible. But as Carson breathes, we notice that he looks fairly normal. Um, the lower hand here is moving out nice and relaxed as he fills up. Uh, his abdomen, diaphragm, his lungs, he breathes deep into his belly. Uh, in someone that had more of an upper chest uh, breathing pattern, you typically see the upper hand rise first before the lower hand, or maybe even the lower hand not even rise at all. And it's not that the upper hand isn't allowed to move, but what you'd rather see is this lower hand move first, and then if the upper hand's going to move more of a forward pattern, then directly up and down. Okay. I can also have Carson put his hands down to his side and I can take my hand and put it right on his abdomen as he breathes. And what I can do is just ask him to uh, take in as deep, an air, as deep a breath as he can. So Carson, go ahead and take a deep breath. Good. Hold it for a second and then exhale. And all I'm feeling for is the, uh, the length of time that it takes him to breathe in and breathe out. Typically those that are uh, in a more of an upper chest breathing pattern or who have high anxiety levels or stress levels, they're going to take in what they think is a very big breath, um, usually filling up their chest instead of breathing deep into their belly. And when they take in that deep breath and they get to the end, it'll be very short, typically three seconds or less, and they'll think in their head that that's a very deep breath. And as they breathe out as well, it'll be a very short amount of time. Uh, the other thing we can do in the seated position, if Carson flips around here so I can show you guys, is uh, we can observe the rib cage from the back. So all I'm going to do is wrap my hands around the lower ribs with my thumbs right near the midline. So here's the spinous processes. And I'm just going to place my thumbs right here in the midline, right on the lower ribs, and I'm going to have Carson breathing normally. And what I'm going to feel for is just for that lateral movement of the ribs. Uh, and if you can see on the video, my thumbs move away from each other and then they move back. In disordered breathing patterns, you'll typically see the hands move upward and the thumbs stay relatively in the same position. They don't move away from each other. Or what you'd see in uh, other disordered breathing patterns would be one side moves and the other doesn't. Um, the other thing you can do from the back here is feel for the lateral movement in the abdomen as he fills up his lungs and, and breathes belt deep into his belly. And I do that by taking my third finger and placing it right onto the iliac crest, my first finger onto the twelfth rib, and then or right onto the lateral rib here, and then my middle finger right into the middle, into the soft tissue. And I should feel as he breathes in, I should feel a little bit of pressure pushing back at me, and that's pretty good right there. From there, we can go into a supine, or actually, flip around one more time, show one more thing here. We can look at um, the clavicle and the first rib, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to palpate right down next to the clavicle, so I've got the front of my first fingers right on the clavicle, right on the superior portion, and the pad of that finger down into that space where the first rib would be, and that's the attachment sites for the uh, to the scalings, the anterior and middle scaling. Okay, they're going to attach onto that rib there. Uh, and when the person is an upper chest breather and these muscles are overactive or tight, or even the traps, as I can feel them here, 
I'll feel these muscles move up, and I'll feel this clavicle move upward as Carson breathes in. And what that does is that's just telling me uh, there's a little bit of upper chest breathing. These muscles are maybe more hyperactive than they need to be. When you go to your palpatory assessment, you can obviously palpate those muscles and see what they feel like. Uh, the other thing to note is just where this, uh, what this rib space feels like in here. Sometimes one will feel a little harder to move than the other, maybe a little less springy, or the tissue might be a little more taut and not even really let you into there. So that's another thing that you can look for. If Carson goes into supine position, uh, right here. And we'll just throw this right underneath the knees. Okay, in the supine position, we can do a similar, uh, similar assessment, just like, uh, just like the seated. I can again put my hand on his belly, feel for the same types of things. He can put his hand on his belly, one hand on his chest, and again, we're looking for the same type of, uh, same type of movement. We want to see that upper hand rise in this position as well. I can go ahead and feel into that lateral tissue, one finger on the rib, one finger on the uh, iliac crest and the middle finger in the soft tissue. And I can feel, there you go, some pushing out into the, uh, pushing out laterally as well as upward. And the upper chest is nice and relaxed. And the final assessment you can use is a prone assessment. So go ahead and flip over and lift your feet here. This is an interesting assessment. I'm sure it's been around for a while. Uh, I learned it from some uh, Leon Chaitow and Judith Delaney material. Um, I don't know exactly where it comes from. But uh, all we're doing, look, looking for here, is what uh, Chaitow would describe as the wave. And uh, basically what that means is if he's breathing normally and healthy, um, we're gonna see the sacrum rise first, and then the lumbar spine, through the thoracic spine and up towards the neck. So all those areas will rise first. What happens if someone's disordered is you might see a block where instead of that wave taking place, one area might move up, um, or instead of the sacrum moving first, we may see movement here in the, in the thoracolumbar area first. Um, and that just might be indicative of something going on there as far as movement not taking place um, or restrictions, anything like that. Uh, these are important things to consider, especially for all these thoracic spine, uh, thoracic mobility issues that we see with people um, in regard to their shoulder health. Uh, obviously, if breathing is disordered and they're breathing more into their upper chest, um, that's gonna change the function of those ribs. Uh, that's gonna change the soft tissue and restrict, uh, restrict some of that movement and impede on some of, those, uh, some of that thoracic spine movement. So uh, hopefully you can take these ideas, take these uh, assessments, bring them back to your clients, give them a shot, um, just see what you find and see if what you find actually confirms with some of the other things that you have seen in their evaluation process. And uh, check out the blog, OptimumSportsPerformance.com um, for more information. Carson Boddicker's blog, also very great, BoddickerPerformance.com. Thank Carson for being here. Thanks a lot, guys.